Hey guys, just wanted to do a real quick tour of the home office and a couple of recent upgrades that I've made to it. Really just to begin, you know, this used to be the formal dining room in our home that was probably used all of maybe twice over the course of about a seven year period. Um, we had one Thanksgiving dinner here, so it was literally just a waste of space all the other time. Uh, not to mention that we've got, you know, a large kitchen area with a table that can hold eight people and a bar that can hold four. So if we ever had a, a big group gathering, we could still accommodate that. So long story short, I basically converted this into my new home office. So to start, I actually built this desk from scratch. It was really my first attempt at woodworking. And, you know, I think it actually went over pretty well. Um, essentially just all two by fours on the base. I did some nice cross members there out of, essentially it's, um, it's reclaimed barn wood uh, to make the little X pattern. And the top is just a piece of plywood that was sanded down and added some polyurethane. Um, so it's a really nice desk. It really fills up the room. I've got a 49 inch Samsung monitor. Um, you know, obviously it's probably a gaming monitor, but it works great because it's essentially two 1080p screens without the borders in, in between. So it's not 4K, so the resolution is essentially 3840 by 1080. So literally it's two uh, 1080p monitors together. So it works really well for spreadsheets and uh, you know doing two things at once, multitasking, etc. So that's the, the main display. Um, you know, I've got a lot of other nice little goodies. I've got the, the Google Home Hub, big shout out to Sean Lou for converting me off the Amazon Alexa devices over to Google. Absolutely love the thing. Um, also have a stream deck, which is this little guy right here by Elgato. And that thing actually works really well with OBS Studio. So all the videos that you see, you know, from me are being produced in OBS Studio, open broadcaster software. Uh, absolutely phenomenal product to be 100% free. Um, a lot of cool things that we're gonna be doing with that in the future. So essentially that's, that's the, the main pieces of the home office. You know, I've got my, my main PC rig there under the desk. It's a Threadripper 32 core, 64 gig of RAM. So it's, it's a hoss, you know, because we do a lot of 4K video editing. Now, one of the things I'm really excited about <clears throat> is the new light board project. So you guys may have seen a picture that I posted recently. So essentially what we wanted to do is for video creation, you know, you could certainly do a traditional whiteboard. And, you know, the problem with the whiteboard though, is you have to draw what you're drawing. You have to be quiet while you're drawing it. And then you have to look back at your audience. So what's really cool about the light board is you actually look through the glass as you're drawing and software like OBS actually flips that image on the horizontal axis. So what you're drawing actually is shown to the audience the way it should be seen as opposed to having a mirror effect where otherwise it would look like you're writing in reverse or backwards. So I thought about a couple different ways of doing this. I thought about building this on a standing, almost an easel style design with caster wheels, you know, in a nice wooden frame. The problem with that approach is, you know, I've, I'm fairly limited in space. You know, I didn't want to just have a giant, you know, piece of glass on a rolling assembly hanging out in the office when I'm not using it and I don't really have anywhere to store it. So, you know, me being an engineer in a past life, you know, figured out a way to actually incorporate that onto the front of my existing desk. So I thought about doing it a couple different ways. One of the biggest challenges was we had to make sure the board would come vertical high enough so it would be eye level so you could actually use it. I mean, obviously if it was down there where, it, where it's at now in its resting position, it's completely unusable. So it had to be able to come vertical enough so that you could actually write on it, but I wanted it to be collapsible to the point when it was not being used, it literally just became a front of the desk, which is exactly what I did. And you know, once I get it raised, I'll go over some of the mechanisms that make this work. But you can see over here on the left, I've got two uh, little pieces of wood that are connected to the front, and those actually work as braces. So it's basically a two-stage um, elevation system, if you will. So it, it goes up once and locks and goes up a second time and locks. That way we can get the height we need. And then those simply swing away like you see them now when it needs to collapse down into its resting position. You can see that I've got one LED strip across the top 
and that's actually to light up whoever's actually writing on the board so that you see their face and that's lit up properly. And then I've got a set of LEDs that are inside the frame that actually work to light up the glass itself. So let me get it raised and I'll be back here in a second. Okay, so now we're back with the light board fully elevated and extended. So let's explore how this actually works. So the first thing that I did was install two desk drawer sliders on the side of the desk. And essentially this is for the depth movement. So as you can see, there's not really a lot of depth that the thing has to come out. You know, probably a good foot worth of travel because this does go completely in underneath the edge of the desk when it's fully put up essentially. So I've got two sets of those. Each one of those, you know, can support 100 pounds a piece. So it's got more than enough, you know, support for the weight of the thing. And you'll notice I've got those little black screws at the bottom and I've got one at the top and that's essentially to lock it in place depth wise so you don't get, you know, any back and forward movement when it's extended. Now, <clears throat> like I said, those little wood pieces, so essentially, I've got those on a regular door hinge, and you can see how this works. So I've got a two by four running across the base that really just begins all the support. So you've got the bottom piece locking into the two by four, and it swings in and locks against this two by four. This one swings out and locks against the underside of the frame. Now, you may notice that it's not flush, and I've actually got, if you can see, just a couple screws screwed in there. And the reason I did that is this is where the LED strip exits the frame. So I didn't want all that weight to constantly be bumping up against the very delicate LED. So I basically put in, you know, just a couple screws to give it a bit of separation. So when it's sitting flush and supported, it's not putting any weight on that LED plug. Okay. And then you've got the frame. Okay. So, same situation over here. This side, we didn't have to worry about any wire, so it's flush. And down here, once again, is flush. So same exact approach. So I added a couple handles here to help lift it because definitely it is heavy. Um, it's a quarter, let's see. Yeah, it's a quarter inch thick piece of glass that I just got from a local glass shop. And I'm gonna show you guys the, the difference between the glass versus plexiglass because same thickness on plexiglass simply did not work. I gave that a shot at first, and you know I don't know if it's the clarity or what, but it wasn't clear enough to allow the light to travel through all the way. So essentially it was a, maybe a valiant effort, but it failed. So we had to swap it out for a real piece of glass. So that's the setup, fully extended. So if you get a little bit different angle, you can see how it comes out and it's perfectly you know, eye level so you can write on it. If we come back here in the office, spin around. So same idea. So there's where all the wires are. Kind of tough to do any type of wire management and conceal any wires when you've got a moving mechanism, but I did manage to you know, get the LED module, uh, double-sided tape, also got a couple of security spots and left enough slack so when it pivots, the wire can of course go in. Now, one of the other things is these sliders are actually locking sliders. So not only do you have the wood supports kind of holding it up, but those drawer sliders actually lock going vertical. So the thing is super secure. It's not going anywhere. So, you know, I kind of joke about the, the Google Home Hub. So I love this thing. Hey, Google, turn the light board on. Okay, turning two things on. And there you go. Now, you can see the LED strip across the top, of course, is on, but it's kind of hard to see the LEDs around the border. But if you kind of see down in one of the corners, you can see all the way around, you've got LEDs basically that just border this thing. And that's what allows the light to pass through the glass. So, if we go over here and turn the main light off, and you know, it's still kind of tough to see. You still really can't tell that anything's going through the, the glass, but, Bear with me for all the movement. I'm gonna grab one of these markers and this is what it looks like when you actually write on it. So, so notice how the colors just pop, you know, and I'm just writing something to give you guys a test. Now, 
This is cool enough as it is, but the problem is, and like we said with software, if you come over here, that's exactly backwards. So it's not gonna do you any good unless you had software to flip it around and flip the image on the horizontal so that you can actually see what it is that you're, you're writing on. So let me show you guys the, the finished product once we've got the lights the way they need to be. And the other thing you'll notice is I've got, get over here where you can see it. I basically have a black curtain that you use for video producing. And it's just across, you know, a regular curtain rod. And that closes off that opening, you know, in this office to give you a black background to stand against. And when you dim the lights and you close the blinds and you deal with the, the camera settings with contrast and, and hues and things like that, you get a really cool image. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, guys, here we go. So this is the finished product. This is the light board raised, all the lights on, the black backdrop behind me, all the, the hue and exposure settings tweaked in on the camera. So this is the finished product. Now, the board is clean right now. I'm still waiting on some, some lint-free microfiber cloths. That's also going to be very important for you guys to have on hand, which I'll link to in the description. Uh, because what happens is, if you don't have a lint-free microfiber, when you clean the glass, you're going to leave behind little pieces of, of cloth. And if it gets to be too bad and there's too much smudging, you'll actually see that reflected in the video. So let me show you exactly how the setup is working right now. And this will also dual as a, a reason for me to use the board so I can illustrate this for you. So if we start with looking at how this setup is, the first thing we're going to work my way going back towards the computer. So here I am. And this is so cool. I love this technology, right? So this is me. I'm looking at a sheet of glass. Okay. And this glass is 0.25 so a quarter inch is thick now on the other side of the glass this is roughly i'm going to say three feet away we have the camera okay so i'm just going to put this little camera on a tripod and this happens to be the logitech brio camera now the logitech brio is a 4k webcam you certainly don't have to use such a thing. If you have a, a DSLR camera that you're already using for photography, this will work. Um, even some lower end webcams could work. Really the key is they have to be really adjustable from an exposure perspective, from a gain, you've got the hues that you may have to tweak, uh, but exposure is critical. You've got contrast and brightness. So it has to have some degree of configurability, some flexibility on customizing the picture before this will work properly. The other big thing I love about the Logitech Brio is the field of view. So like I said right here, we're only about three feet away from the glass, which when you think about it, this glass is kind of hard to draw the three dimensional, but the glass is roughly six feet wide. So when you think about a six foot wide sheet of glass and the camera is only three foot deep, being able to pick up the whole glass is quite impressive. So that's one of the things I also love about the Logitech Brio. Now I also have this on the camera. You know, I mentioned a tripod. Uh, I'll link to the description as far as what this is, but it's going to depend on your application, whether or not you're able to use what I'm using, because this is essentially a desktop tripod, which I'll show you in another shot with the lights on so you can get a better view of the gear that I'm using. Now, what's happening though, is I write on this side of the glass, the image that the camera is going to see is reversed, okay? So this is a reversed image. So this is gonna be a problem if we didn't have software to fix it because it really doesn't do you any good if you see everything that I'm writing backwards, you would effectively have to hold up a mirror just for yourself to be able to translate it, which doesn't work. That's where the software comes in. So the camera is feeding into my PC, okay? Now inside the PC, let's change up the colors to give you guys an example of some of the contrast. And this is where these neon markers I'll also link to. The, these are actually Expo neons. And I have some more on order to give us a little bit more flexibility on the colors. But the software that I'm using is called OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. Now OBS is awesome. It's completely free. A lot of podcasters and YouTube streamers use OBS religiously. Um, it's really, really flexible and also can do quite a bit 
Um, for any of those of you familiar with TriCasters and actual sets where you can create different scenes and transitions and lower thirds and desktop screen captures, it, it provides all this functionality in a free package. It's quite impressive. Now, inside OBS, essentially what we're doing is flipping this image horizontally. Okay, and forgive my handwriting. Now, when we flip it horizontally, that is the magic that allows me to talk through the glass to the camera and to you, the viewer, without having to worry about writing backwards, which I certainly do not possess the ability to do. So this is gonna flip the image horizontally and then on the other end of this, and this is where OBS is really awesome. It depends on what type of deliverable you're going for. So for an example, if you just want a pre-recorded video, so you want an MP4, an AVI, some sort of compressed video format that you can upload to YouTube, you can share among colleagues, OBS can do that. So we'll just say MP4, it's one of the most common formats. What if you wanted to do this live though? So if you wanted to do some sort of live webcast or let's say a Skype call where this would be handy, uh, maybe a Teams meeting, a WebEx, you name it. The other really nice piece to OBS will come out here. It has a virtual camera. Okay, now the virtual camera is essentially a plugin for OBS that will spit this image out as a webcam input. Now, think about that for a minute. So basically, We've got this whole flow where I'm behind the glass, I'm talking to it and through it to you, the audience, but I'm also doing all these diagrams and all the writing. And essentially, all the way up until this point right here with OBS software, the image is backwards. Now, once OBS flips that horizontal axis, no matter what output you're going for is going to be a proper viewing angle. So the words will be written the proper way, et cetera. Now, what's really awesome about this virtual camera plugin, it shows up like a webcam in your computer. So in other words, when you go to Skype, when you go to WebEx, when you go to Teams, any of these streaming platforms, and you start your video feed, you might see your Logitech webcam. You may see your built-in you know, laptop integrated webcam. You're now going to see another one that shows OBS webcam. So all you have to do is select that as your webcam of choice, and now you're going to be broadcasting out to the world live anything that OBS is capturing. Now, what's cool about that is, sure, it'd be great for this application. So we're doing the light board. We're doing some examples. But it can also create a virtual set. So maybe you want to have the light board as almost the whole screen, but then have a border around that, perhaps with some scrolling text or some additional thoughts that you can add in with OBS. Maybe some screenshots to complement your light board. You can do all this in OBS. So this is a really good application if you want to take this technology and use it for live streaming purposes. It's not simply for video recording. And a lot of the videos that I see on YouTube, certainly, at least the ones that I've watched, insinuate that this technology is really designed for video creation. And be that true, it definitely works best for video creation it also has a really good use case for live, you know, for live audiences, for, you know, taking your WebExes and your Teams and your Skype meetings to the next level. Now, here's the other cool thing. If you are doing the video format, the video export option, every time you're, you're whiteboarding, let, let's say you're in a room of people and you're whiteboarding, you know, it's really bad practice to talk to the whiteboard, explaining a concept as you're drawing out the schematic that you're trying to explain. So best practice would be you make a drawing, you make part of your architecture drawing, you don't speak, then you turn around to your audience and address what you've actually just you know, drawn on the board. Well, that works okay, but what's really nice about this is if you are doing a video, you never really have to look away from the board. You're always gonna be looking through the glass to your audience. You're going to be drawing it out as you speak, so it's not as distracting as, you know, if I were talking this way and then turned around to you. But what's also nice if you're doing the video is you can fast forward through some of the schematics that you're drawing out. So if you take that same best practice principle and you don't speak 
while you're drawing out part of your diagram or part of what you're trying to drill home, you can actually speed that up in post over an OBS and then start talking to the schematic that you've just drawn out through the light board. So it, it gives you a really cool effect, which you know I can demonstrate here. Let me just show you an example. Okay, so we're back. So imagine if I had to draw this whole schematic out while I'm talking to you, you know, trying to draw it as best I can and focus on you, the audience, or again, if the purpose of this is to create a video like we're doing here as this example for this post, I can simply be quiet, draw what I need to draw and come back to the diagram. So now you can see that I've drawn up this diagram. We have a very basic example of two geographies, two different locations, we're talking about Veeam technology here. So you've got VMware at both sites. You've got, you know, essentially the WAN and the cloud in between. Um, we've got NetApp storage at both sites where we might potentially go down the rabbit hole of talking about snap mirror technologies and how we integrate with that. We've got, you know, the, the VMware host diagrammed here, the VMs. So you can create this schematic, fast forward through the video while you're drawing it, and then come back and explain the content. And again, if you were doing it live, maybe you draw it in chunks, explain draw it another little chunk and explain. But the beauty is you're not, you're not turning away from your audience and turning back. You're always looking at your audience, which is cool. So really awesome technology. I mean, you can move around and talk from it from different angles while you're still focusing on the camera. And, you know, I personally love this technology. I, I think this is the best thing that's happened to whiteboard since we moved up from the chalkboard. So this is awesome. Um, definitely gives you a whole different dynamic when you're trying to explain something, whether that's how we've actually got this set up, whether it's, you know, virtual environments and technology, whether it's teaching for, you know, non-tech related, you know, um, curriculums or, or concepts, it really doesn't matter. Anything that would help being able to diagram and draw out, you can do with this Lightboard technology. So it's, it's a real basic setup, just to kind of summarize again how it's working. You've got me on this side of the glass, you have the, you know, quarter inch thick piece of glass, You've got the camera roughly three feet away on the opposite side that's still receiving the reversed image. That is then be being piped into the PC. And this works with Mac too. OBS supports Windows or Mac, doesn't matter. The PC is running the OBS software, which is where that horizontal axis flip occurs. So once you flip it horizontally, now everything looks the way it should look on your side. And then depending on what you're going for, you can modify the output. So whether you're going for an MP4 video deliverable or you're hosting a live event, you can just pipe this into whatever software you're using, using that virtual camera plugin. And now it's going to show up as an additional webcam inside your, your machine itself, whether it's uh, Windows or Mac. So really cool technology. OBS is free. I'll link to it in the description. I'll link to all the hardware that I'm using in the description. So hopefully this is a good quick example of how you can take your whiteboarding to the next level using the Lightboard technology. Thanks again for watching the video and have a great day.